The gibbard sutherwhite theorem is important and quite significant, but it still gives you the sort of negative result that you cannot really have any non-dictatorial uh, social choice function uh, with those two very desirable properties, uh, ontoness and uh, strategy proofness. Now, is that a, a end of the story for social choice functions? Turns out that it is not, and that is because of the observation that we have made uh, in, in, in the previous module that the given Sutherwhite result holds only for the case when all preferences are admissible. So, this uh, the domain of the social choice function was nothing but the, uh, the whole of uh, script P. Now, this may not be always true for certain uh, applications. So, we might find uh, some of the cases where uh, we can actually restrict so the all preference orderings over uh, over this uh, um, over this alternatives might not be even feasible and that is where we, our uh, our story of positive results begin so uh, and in this module and also in the uh, uh, the subsequent modules we'll discuss some of this uh, uh, domains uh, which are strict subsets of this script p which we call the domain restriction and that is exactly uh, the uh, the area of research where um, uh, a lot of social choice functions start becoming uh, giving interesting results which are non dictatorial and also uh, satisfies these two at least these two properties of ontoness and strategy proofness so uh, an alternative way how you can write strategy proofness is the following so we have uh, defined so far strategy proofness in terms of non-manipulability. So if, uh, if you can find a social choice function which is not manipulable, where we have defined manipulable, uh, manipulability formally, uh, then we call that strategy proof. You can uh, give a direct um, uh, definition in the following way, that if, if the preference of a, of a player i is given by pi, and when uh, it is uh, reporting is uh, is preference truthfully to this uh, to this direct mechanism versus when it is uh, reporting a uh, misreporting it to pi prime in the former case it will uh, get a better uh, uh, a better preference so it, it should prefer the outcome that it gets when it uh, does not misreport versus when it misreports and this uh, preference ordering uh, holds for all pi and pi prime and also for all p minus i uh, p minus i's for all the other players so in particular if we want to just make sure that this is this can be any arbitrary pi prime we can actually uh, use the tilde to denote that other players might uh, misreport their preferences it does not really matter so in that sense it is uh, quite equivalent to the dominant strategy incentive compatibility and we also made that remark earlier uh, so, no matter what the other players are doing, reporting your true preference ordering is, uh, is strictly beneficial for this agent i and that holds for all agents uh, i's. The, uh, the other alternative which can happen is even after changing your preferences uh, or misreporting your preferences, you might not be able to change the outcome. So, if that happens, then you are, uh, uh, then you uh, did not change anything. So, therefore, there is no question of uh, preferring one over the other. So either of these two things can happen, and then we'll go, uh, we are going to say that uh, this uh, social choice function f is strategy proof. Now, in this domain, as we have already discussed, so instead of uh, uh, taking a mapping from script p to the end to a, we are reducing that uh, p to a subset of uh, of that p, uh, a subset s, uh, uh, which we, we are going to call a domain restriction. So why it is a domain restriction? It is reducing the domain of the social choice function. So there are some important domain restrictions that uh, that is uh, already well known in the literature, and we'll be discussing uh, three of them in this uh, in this course. So the first domain restriction is uh, single peak preferences, which we are going to start next, and later on we'll see there are uh, domain restrictions like divisible goods allocation and quasi-linear preferences. We'll discuss this third uh, 
uh, domain restriction in uh, quite detail uh, because that is uh, very applicable to various uh, real world applications. So what is single peak preferences? L let me start with an example uh, to, to motivate uh, uh, this problem. So suppose uh, there is a um, there is a room whose temperature the uh, the air conditioner's temperature has to be set, and there uh, there is a bunch of people in that room who has different preferences for the temperature. So someone likes, and uh, this is what we are going to assume. So uh, if you like a specific temperature, you have a the most um, comfortable uh, temperature setting. Let's say 25 degrees. And anything hotter than that or anything colder than that is not comfortable for you. So if it uh, starts becoming, uh, if your uh, most preferred temperature is 25 degrees, then uh, if it is going to 24, then you uh, dislike it less. But you dislike it even lesser if it goes to 23 degrees or 22. And as it goes down, your uh, preferences for those temperatures are also going down. So in some sense, uh, and similarly, the, you can uh, think about when it is going hotter, so from 25 to 26, uh, you uh, prefer it less, but you prefer it even less if it goes to 27 and even more. So in some sense, uh, you can imagine that this Ti star is the most uh, preferred temperature for this, uh, uh, for this agent I. And if it is going down, it is going down in a, in a monotone fashion and similarly on the other direction. And that is essentially bringing us to this, uh, uh, this kind of a preference and its name called the single peak. So you have exactly one peak which you prefer the most and in both directions from that peak, your uh, preference is going down. So some, somebody else might have a uh, different uh, most comfortable temperature. So the other person might be uh, liking 27 degrees the most and then uh, it has the same kind of a preference profile. It, it goes down uh, in, in, this, uh, in this way. But the point remains that uh, it has a different peak but it has the same uh, uh, structure of its preference which is single peaked. Now, what is uh, common in this uh, uh, two different preferences? The common thing is both referring to the same uh, temperature scale. So, uh, it is the, the ordering of this temperature 25, 26, 27, uh, which, is a, uh, which is a set of uh, integers, is same for both these both this players. So, there is one common ordering which we are going to refer to. So, here the temperature scale is essentially the common ordering. Uh, but your preferences uh, might have might be different so based on where your peak lives and how um, uh, so if you if I ask you to compare between let's say uh, 24 degrees so if your peak is 25 then between 24 degrees and 28 um, degrees how you compare between these two things that might change um, one might prefer more hotter temperature uh, um, dislike hotter temperature less than um, uh, colder temperatures that that is completely feasible under this uh, preference profile but the point is uh, if you are on the one side of this peak you have a monotone uh, decrease uh, in your preferences and on the other side you also have a, another monotone uh, decrease so you have a common order over this alternatives agent preferences a single peak with respect to that common order so there are several other examples So the temperature example is one of them, but you can have a facility location. So if you have a hospital or school or post office that is located uh, on, a, on a real line. So if it is far from your current location, uh, supposing you also have a house uh, uh, and you want your the school or the hospital to be as close to your house as possible. Uh, so then you have a single peak as the hospital or uh, school goes further away from your uh, house location, uh, you prefer it less. Uh, similarly, the, you can think about political ideology. If you have a specific political ideology, anything left to it or right to it is not uh, really uh, beneficial for you. Or if you if you are at the extreme, then your uh, preference profile can only go down on one direction. That is also a single peak preference. So there are various other kind of examples that you can construct and uh, they all fall under this category of uh, single peak preferences. So uh, 
uh, we will denote this natural ordering, the, the common ordering that we discussed uh, with uh, this notation less than or greater than as we do in case of real numbers. So we can say that uh, A is less than B and this will essentially denote that this is the, uh, the, the ordering, the common ordering of these alternatives uh, on a on a real line and for for this discussion we are only talking about one dimensional single thickness that is uh, you have a single real line and on that you are defining your preferences in particular um, it does not need to be a real number it, it, it can be any kind of transitive and anti-symmetric relation so for simplicity of exposition we are actually using this uh, real line example as the as a common ordering but it does not need to be so so transitive we know so if a is less so a is less than b and let's say c is less than a then we know that uh, c is also going to be less than b so this is uh, uh, this is uh, due to transitivity and anti-symmetric says that if you have a less than b uh, you can have either a less than b or b less than a but not both this means that uh, uh, this preference, this uh, sort of common ordering has uh, this sort of a strictness. You cannot have both of them together. And that is quite natural. I mean, we just want to distinguish different um, different points on this real line and therefore they should uh, maintain a complete order. Okay, so how is it a domain restriction? So let us uh, now uh, discuss a, a specific example uh, to uh, to understand why it is a domain restriction. So for uh, without loss of generality, let us assume that A is the leftmost position, uh, B is the second left, and C is the last one on the rightmost position. Now, what is uh, what can happen if you have this A, B, C as three arbitrary alternatives, and in the Gibbert Sandpoint setting where we were allowing for all possible preferences over these alternatives? then you would have had three factorial uh, possibilities which are listed all here now because a b c actually follows uh, this ordering this common ordering then uh, single pick preferences actually rules out certain uh, uh, possibilities so for instance you cannot have a situation where a is the most preferred and then followed by c and then followed by b or maybe c is the top one and then a and then B. So you can already begin to see that it has multiple picks. That is not allowed according to the um, ac according to this domain restriction of single peakness. So we are actually ruling out these two alternatives uh, if we uh, uh, if we assume that this uh, common ordering is so. The other four alternatives are feasible. You can either have this kind of a preference ordering, this kind of a preference ordering, or any kind of pick which is at B but you cannot have this kind of a multiple peak uh, outcome uh, multiple peak as your preference so that is certainly reducing so uh, if you had all of this together then uh, it is going back to the script p but because we are now in the in the subset so this part is essentially the script of s which is a single peak preference so this is the, uh, the this is a pictorial description. Let us make it a little formal. So a preference ordering PI, which is we, which we are going to assume to be a complete ordering, linear ordering over A, no indifferences, of agent I uh, is single picked with respect to this common ordering uh, less than of these alternatives. If the two conditions hold, if B and C are in A with this condition that they uh, both of them are actually living on the left hand side of the peak. So this is the this is the case where uh, so P P I 1 is the topmost alternative of player I. So uh, B and C are both living on this left hand side uh, uh, of this uh, of this uh, peak and in particular B is uh, living on the, uh, the more left position than C and both of them are actually on the left hand side then what we know uh, by the by the definition of uh, single peakness is c is going to be more preferred than b that is the uh, that is the assumption uh, over this uh, single peakness similarly if you have uh, this thing on the right hand side so let's say this is the the other direction where b uh, is actually uh, larger than uh, or equal to p i1 
and that is uh, even that is smaller than C then uh, what we know is B will be more preferred than C under this preference profile PI so that uh, PI is going to be a single peak preference so this is a more formal way of defining that and as before we are going to denote uh, by script of S the set of all single peak preferences so therefore now our social choice function is a domain restricted social choice function which is mapping uh, from S to the N to A now let us uh, look at how it uh, circumvent the GS theorem so uh, when we are saying that it is actually um, so GS theorem is not true in this uh, single peak preference then we must be able to give a mechanism which is not dictatorial yet on to end uh, and uh, strategy proof uh, the on to and uh, parity efficiency I leave, leave for you to uh, verify I'm just going to argue that uh, there exists a strategy proof as well as non-dictatorial uh, mechanism and how is that so remember um, uh, let, let me explain this with the uh, with the uh, with the example that we have uh, already discussed so we had this uh, preferences where the temperatures were uh, single peak and you had different uh, uh, falls different um, alternatives were having uh, different slopes so this is a preference profile of one player and there could be a different preference profile for another player and similarly maybe for uh, for the for the third player uh, this is looking like this now uh, let us look at one specific uh, uh, one specific mechanism which is just collecting together all the peaks so it is asking all the agents to uh, to say what their peaks are and it is picking the leftmost peak so let's say um, in the air conditioner example um, the mechanism is saying that uh, uh, give me your most favorite temperatures and I'll set the uh, uh, the temperature of the AC to be the coldest one coldest one among all the uh, all the most favorite uh, temperatures now even though uh, the other player might not like it so for instance if you if you are picking this uh, as your outcome uh, this is certainly worse than uh, this agent's uh, uh, true preference and also even less for the, uh, the for the magenta players uh, preference but you can you actually change the outcome by manipulating your preferences and will that be beneficial for you the answer is no because the only way this uh, temperature can be changed uh, so for instance we are looking at this green player here and it is trying to change the uh, the outcome uh, because the mechanism is designed as, as such that when the um, outcome will always be the coldest temperature that is the the the, the lowest peak in this single peak preference uh, the only way you can change it is by uh, putting your peak on the other side because if you if it uh, reports its peak somewhere above the lowest position does not change so the temperature won't change the outcome won't change the only way it can misreport is possibly going here and misreporting so let's say yeah so this is the the greens misreported uh, preference here right in that case it can change the outcome and the outcome becomes this but in its uh, remember that it is just misreporting its true preference its true true preference over these temperatures remains as before and uh, earlier it was getting an uh, outcome which was still more preferred because of this single peakness property than the outcome that it is getting now so it's the same green player who has actually misreported its peak to here and got a temperature which it uh, prefers less than the current uh, outcome similarly you can think about uh, the magenta player even though it is getting uh, something here if it misreports something here then it gets something something worse which is uh, which it uh, prefers less than its current outcome so none of the players can actually uh, misreport and gain and uh, clearly this is a non dictatorial mechanism it is actually collectively taking the decision of all these players uh, and uh, it is also strategy proof uh, that is uh, intuitively we have explained this and this is this mechanism is not unique here you can actually think about uh, any uh, kth lowest uh, lowest temperature so you can pick any kth lowest peak uh, from the from the left in particular you can uh, pick the, the the rightmost peak that is also 
also feasible so if you um, instead say that uh, I'm going to set the temperature to be the uh, report your peaks I'm going to set the temperature to be the highest temperature then also you can argue in a very similar way to show that it is not uh, manipulable by any of the players and in particular what is more uh, popular or common is to pick the p uh, pick uh, that uh, peak which is at the m uh, middle so which is the median of all these peaks so sometimes this mechanism is also called the median peak mechanism and that will also be uh, strategy proof so it's not very difficult to argue why this is strategy proof um, so uh, that is one example how you can uh, circumvent gs theorem we can actually find uh, mechanisms that are onto and strategy proof and not necessarily dictatorial 